Hello? 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 Today I'm going to talk about the giant UV clumps in Pandos galaxies. And uh, here are some examples of the clumpy galaxies and the clumps that I'm going to talk about today. So each purple circle is a clump. So those clumps, we think they are very massive, they are very bright. Uh, they are like 100 or even 1,000 times brighter and massive, more massive than local regions. And uh, uh, we're going to study the properties of those clumps. So this work has been done together with many panels members. Uh, I list some of the names here. Also, you can think this, this talk more as an advertisement, because I'm, what I want to tell you is now we have a multi-wavelength catalog for clumps in the Kendall School South region. And uh, you are very welcome to use those catalogs to test the your models, also to test your own measurement of clumps. And I'm going to discuss why we think such a catalog is important and how can we, how, how we constructed such a catalog. And uh, I'm going to show you a few examples of the properties of clumps from this catalog. So here are uh, some examples of galaxies. If you look at this star forming galaxies, you can see very clearly. Uh, different kind of structures, you can say spiral arms, you can say bulge, and um, for some galaxies you can also say bar. But if, when you go to higher and higher ratio, for example, this is ratio of one, almost one, two, three, and it's harder and harder to find those well-defined structures. Instead, what you see, uh, those giant clumps, here, here, or at high ratio. Even more clearly, you can only find the clumps instead of spiral arms and bars or disks. So we are trying to understand what are those clumps, how they were formed, and how they evolved once they formed. Why are we interested in those clumps? Because they are very important uh, test of our knowledge of star formation feedback and uh, collective structure formation. So people are uh, arguing about what's the formation mechanisms of clumps. So it could be formed due to the, uh, violent disk instability, as Abhishek said, for many years. And also it could be formed due to minor merger. It, that, this means they, uh, the individual clump, they can be a satellite galaxy, or they can be a small satellite that triggers the violent disk instability. Clumps can also form due to major merger. And also clumps, now people are arguing clumps can even form due to uh, Plenty gas accretion. The gas accretion is not smooth. It has some uh, structure before you accrete it. Uh, the gas has some structure before you accrete it in galaxies. And uh, which one is working and which one is the primary one tells us about the structure formation at high ratio. And what's more important is about the evolution of the clumps. So once the clumps are full, are they going to the center of the galaxies to merger and to form the the genitors of basic bodies, so this is the inward migration scenario. And all they could be quickly disrupted by feedback. If the feedback is strong, if they are not very strongly found, the clumps are not very strongly found the systems. So which version is, uh, is correct is important because 
the tells us what it, whether plants is a major contributor of art formation. What's more important is it tells us uh, plants, they are very good uh, probes of the strength of the feedback. So here's an example why we say plants are good uh, probe of the strength of the feedback. So this is a simulation from GNO et al. 2012. So if you have a same galaxy with a different uh, strength of wind, this is a strong wind, and you can form plant, but after about 30 million years, the plant disappeared. It got quickly disrupted by the feedback. But if you uh, feedback wind is, is weak, and you can see the plant gradually go into the center, and it can live longer than 100 or even 200 billion years, and in the end, it will merge to the center to form box. And here is another example to show clamps, they are important, and the clamps properties are important. Here, I show you two simulations. One is the R simulation, run by Daniel Severino, and the other is bio simulation. Just look at these two plots. These are, uh, I think, uh, gas surface density. They look pretty much similar, the morphology is similar, but if you look at this plot, this is a clamp lifetime versus clamp mass. And those uh, black points are from R, and this is the region covered by the bio simulation. So the mass region is uh, more or less similar, but if you look at the lifetime uh, value, there's almost an order of magnitude different between, between R and bio simulation. And this is because R uses a supernova feedback plus UV radiation pressure feedback, but uh, you fire beyond supernova and the UV radiation feedback, they also have extra source of feedback. So the age of the clamps is an important uh, parameter to tell us the, whether your feedback models you see in simulation is realistic or not. But when we talk about clamps, there's always a challenge, that is the observational effect. So because of the observational effects, there's a lot of debate and the, uh, disagreement between uh, different people. So the observational effect I'm talking about here is the uh, sensitivity limit and also the resolution limit. Usually observers we will talk to observers to say, hey, are you uh, high redshift clamps are simply uh, due to the low resolution, low sensitivity, it could be just H2 regions, but when you go to higher and higher redshift, you cannot see them clearly. And also, when you go to higher and higher redshift, you could, you could have several H2 regions blended together, it will give you a larger plan. And also, if you talk to series, they will say, okay, we see some clamps in our simulation, but those clamps may not be the, exactly the same thing you find in your, in your uh, observations. So um, here is a good plot. Give you an example of this uh, uh, disagreement or uh, debate. So this is a uh, plot from this paper, and it's clamp mass versus uh, hello mass. And they collected the measurement from different surveys. For example, red is from a deep survey, and the green is from a lens galaxy, and also uh, siren is from shallow surveys. So the point that they want to make here is, although there are some uh, mass effect, but they want to say, hey, look at this stellar mass, clamp mass. Clamps detect from the shallow surface, they're almost above this line, but clamps detect that uh, deep, from deep at the lens scale is most of uh, below this line. So that's a, they thought this is a very uh, obvious sign of observational effect. This is because you sensitivity, you can only detect the large clamps in, uh, in shallow surface. But when I looked at this plot, I thought more about the selection effect, and it depends on how you select the clamps. If you select the clamps from UV, you can get the small clamps, and if you select the clamps from rest of frame optical, you can get the larger clamps. So the, um, the goal is, so that's why we are thinking it's, it's very necessary to present a sample, a sample of clamps, which represents our best knowledge of observed clamps. Here, our, not many observers or the whole community, our just means the people who, who are writing this paper with me. So, <laughs> you may say, okay, you, 
you, uh, you measurement or your knowledge is not correct, but that's okay. And you should let me know what are the clamps you put in your work and in your observation. So we cannot just say uh, uh, your clamps are not, the, uh, not what I say. And you should, everybody should say what is the, their clamp definition and how their clamps are made. So uh, also, uh, even between series, there are some differences. For example, this is uh, uh, the medium value of uh, clamp mass from Severino et al. And this is the medium value of uh, Tamburello et al. 2015. This is also an order of magnitude difference between these two samples. So that's why we think the clamp uh, catalog published to the community and everybody can use it to test different things are important. And it's important step, I call the step two, towards understanding the observational effects of clamps. And I'm going to step one below. So basically, the catalog is constructed from galaxies in candles to source and to north. And we use a clamp detection from rest of near UV as described in my previous paper. So I would say this is a step one. You need to have a physical definition based on, on some, some physical, physical quantities. Here we use UV and luminosity, and you cannot just use the appearance of a galaxy to say, okay, I, I see something catching my eyes, so I call it a clamp. And also for each clamp uh, detected in UV, we measure H band uh, PSF, uh, uh, we measure HSD band photometry from uh, D band all the way to uh, H band or PSF match, and we run SD feeding to all those bands. And the one important thing here is we did a different test of how, how can we subtract the diffuse or disk background around the plant. And this is very important because people are arguing whether your plant properties or any relation you find in your plant studies are uh, contaminated by the disk diffuse background. So now uh, let, let me go back to this plot. We have this catalog. We can see how this catalog behaves in this plot. And all those purple circles are clamps from my catalog. Now you can see clearly, we, we can detect that we are using a shallow. Here, shallow means candles, uh, candles type, deep means HUDF type. We use a shallow survey, but we can still detect the clamps below 10 to 8. And we can detect the clamps all the way down to 10 to 6. So this is uh, what I said, we, everyone needs to present their plant catalog and uh, test whether we are talking about the same plants. So this is a sample, uh, sample of plants. All the red points are galaxies with plants in our catalog. It uh, uh, represents the star forming may sequence very well. And all the black points, they are not, those galaxies are not included in our, in our sample. Mostly because their axial ratio is less than 0.5. We don't want to use edge-on like galaxies. And also, the, uh, all galaxies are larger galaxies. They are larger than the resolution uh, power of uh, with big degree. So with this catalog, we can much improve our previous studies. Here is a plot from my 2012 paper. We find the UV optical color of clamps as a relation with their distance to to the, the black the centers. centers. So, so the uh, clamps, uh, those of the center are red and the clamps uh, uh, in all the skirts are blue. blue. So, so this, this work is based on 40 clamps in only 10 massive gaps and at a narrow redshift. Red now what we can do is this. We have about 3,000 clamps in about 1,300 1, galaxies, not massive. Galaxies at the ratio of 0.5 to 3. 3. So, this so this plot shows you UV color as a function of a black concentric distance of clamps. So this is a rash, uh, low ratio of 0.5 to 1, intermediate ratio 1 to 2, and uh, high ratio 2 to 3. And this column is low mass galaxies, stellar mass 10 to 9, 9.8, intermediate mass galaxies 9.8, 10.6 and the very massive galaxies. Now we can study the color gradient of clamps in different, uh, in different stellar mass regions and in different redshift things. So interesting thing is we found this color gradient as we found it before. 
in most of uh, Russia and stellar, uh, stellar mass things year, 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 year. But when you go to very high ratio of the beams, the trend, the, the gradient is almost flat. And we are trying to understand what is the reason of this flat trend. What's more important here is we also studied the color gradient of these. And uh, those are the uh, brown curves in each plot. So the disk color gradient is totally different from the lamp color gradient. So this is uh, what we say we are trying to subtract uh, the disk diffuse light to minimize the uh, pollution of disk light to plants. Looks like we did a very well job here. And uh, because we run SED fitting, we can derive the age. Most people are interested in the age of the plants here. So we show the age gradient of the plants. Again, in most of the things, in the low, most of the low ratio, lower ratio of things, we say this age age gradient uh, clamps close to the center, they are uh, older clamps in all the skirts, they are uh, younger. So, but in the, at the very high ratio of two to three, we didn't find a very clear trend of age gradient. So, uh, I'm not going to uh, interpret what's the physical meaning of the age gradient here, uh, just to present the result. So as I said, this is uh, the, what we did is a step two. We have a catalog. We can compare all catalog with other peoples and we can measure the physical properties. Uh, uh, next step is step three is to study clamps and candlelight the images. Candlelight, this is a uh, uh, art simulation. One galaxies, we add observational effect to it and to get the, to get the more HST images and we try to measure the clamps from those images. So we got some uh, preliminary results here. So this is again the color gradient. Black points are from observation and uh, all other points are from simulation. So uh, again, we find the central clamps are rather in both the observation and the simulation all the way uh, from ratio to one to ratio to two. And it looks like observation and simulation match very well here. This is an ongoing project that we are um, still working on that. Once we have a direct uh, comparison between simulation and observation, we will know the properties of the plants uh, better. So here is a summary. Uh, I would say we need a few steps to understand the observational effect of the plants. We have done the first step, and we have done the second step, and we will go into the third step, and we studied the physical properties of the plants over a very wide range of ratio. Galaxies. You now people are talking about clamps at ratio five or six. So we hope one day we can push to that limit. And also, then this is an advertisement. We have a clamp catalog available. We will tell you the galaxy properties, clamp photometry, and the clamp scalar populations with different background subjection. Thank you. Um, we can uh, we can we can get star formation rate from SCD uh, SCD fitting. Or we can get star formation rate from the rest of the urine luminosity. That's fine. But uh, how can we turn star formation rate into the star formation rate the density? It's a little bit of a challenge because we don't because in our measurement we assume those clumps they are unresolved sources. So it's hard to measure the size uh, or the area of the plants. So. Thank you. 